Welcome to the Law of Your Money and You. I'm Roberta Sapphire, an attorney in Sharon, Mass, and I feel great today. And I'm Camille Barron, a financial coordinator also in Sharon, Mass, and I feel even better than great. And the reason why, that's great, and the reason why is we have such a unique, wonderful guest that makes people feel great, and I want to say thank you for coming, Sarah Winman. Hi. And her little puppy. What's that puppy's name? This is Abby. Hi, Abby. Oh, Abby. Well, She's tell beautiful. us tell us about Abby. Tell us about yourself. Well, I became acquainted with Abby and and took her for my own little puppy about two years ago. And when I met her, her temperament was so easygoing. I took her to puppy training, and she did so well. We continued her training, and I did it at PetSmart and Walpole. And she was doing so well, they said I could become, she could become certified. Certified and, what? Well, here's my certification. She is certified through the American Kennel Club to do pet therapy. So mm -hmm. she, I, she, was, she did so well that people said to me that I should take her and do pet therapy with her. And, and what is pet therapy? I mean, I know what American Kennel Club is, but uh, tell, tell us about, tell us about what, I was going to say, tell us what the American why Kennel you, Club why is. Why don't you first. tell us about yourself first? <laughs> Do everything. <laughs> Do everything. We want to hear everything. <laughs> well, I'm a single mom, and I have two daughters, and my older daughter has autism. So she needed some calming. And so um. we originally got her so that she could help her to cope with different stressful situations. So like when she goes to the dentist, I would put her on her lap and it would help to calm her. Oh. So then I thought, you know, I could really use her to help others. So a, someone from Sharon had, had recommended that I get involved with hospice. So I thought, and everyone said to me, oh, that would be such a sad thing to do. But I find it to be a very rewarding thing. Well, first of all, to tell people what hospice is. Don't forget about the American Kennel Club, but a lot of people don't know what hospice is, so tell them. Hospice is an organization that provides nursing and different medical and emotional support for people who are going to be passing away. Oh. So everyone who's in hospice is pretty much fatal. So you know going in that you're going to be working with people, and I find that family has a very difficult time dealing with a loved one who's that ill. Mm -hmm. But I would go in and I would bring my little puppy and I'd put them on the patients and I would bring just a little bit of joy to their day, to their lives, mm -hmm. just by being in there. So I provide the pet therapy by providing comfort to people who otherwise may not have received it. I have to tell you about my favorite patient that I had. Oh, yes. She had bipolar. She was a very ill woman and she never got married. She never had a job. No one knew how to handle her. And by bringing my puppy, I would, she couldn't hear, she, <laughs> she'd yell everything. I would put her on her and she would touch her and she would hug her. And oh, since she's yeah. so little, she's able to go onto the patient's beds. Mm -hmm. So she would provide this comfort, and, and through that, I was able to find out, she'd be like, what color is she? And I'd be like, well, she's white. And she'd be like, my favorite color is orange. And I was able to find out, she'd say, what does she eat? I'm like, well, she likes to eat carrots. She'd say, mm -hmm. I don't like carrots, but I like sweet potatoes. And I learned more about her through the puppy than the therapist that worked wow. with her. That's amazing. Well, turn, turn the puppy. But she, <laughs> she, she actually <laughs> never had anyone else come and visit her. Oh, how sad. So, and, and her own family, she didn't really have any family. Oh. So they didn't know. So yeah. it's, I, I think I get more out of it oh, than sure. the patients because yes. I'm able to go and provide a comfort, a level of care through the puppy because she actually just lies on the patients. Oh. Another... Um, patient I had was actually an attorney and she actually nobody thought she could move at all and she was just kind of in a fetal position on the bed Aww. and I took her Abby and I put her 
into her, you know, against her stomach and against her chest. And I took one hand and I put it on her paw and she, you could see her squeezing it. And I took the other hand and I put it on Abby's back and you could see her finger oh, just moving. Really? And the That's people were like, the they said they this. never had gotten a reaction from her. Really? And they were so shocked that she could move like that. And this was a woman, she was in her 80s, and she was an attorney in a time when I don't think a lot of women were attorneys. So she was really an amazing woman yes. in her own right. But to be able to provide a comfort was to her someone, family there when you, you were doing Well, that? no, they weren't. Let, let me ask you a question. This is, it, it, this, this is through hospice. Do yes. you ever come into contact, like we, we had somebody on the show with service animals for the Warriors, a national organization, and um, I, I think we get more calls sometimes just on that. And more website hits and everything. Yeah, more, more everything on that particular segment. This woman came from Springfield. Do you ever run into, like, service people? I have dog? not. So, th so, so this is another phase of comfort dogs because those dogs are comfort dogs. They're taught to comfort the person like when they get nervous. So this is another thing that I bet you a lot of people are not aware of. This is, this is so wonderful what you're doing. Is, is it always the same purse, uh, same place that you go to or different I go places? To, I work through Life Choice Hospice and so they, you know, my patients will pass and they'll send me to a different patient. So I go to different facilities, whether it's Brockton or Newton or right here in Sharon, we have um, a home, and I was able to go there. Mm. You don't go to private homes? I do not. Mm. So mm. this is all over that, that you go? Yeah, but, Life but, Choice Hospice has a lot of different places, a lot of facilities. Where are they, they located? Well, their main place in this area, it's a national organization, oh, is w really? located in Waltham. Wow. So there, you know, there's all kinds of different places that hospice works through, but there are a lot of criteria to be able to get onto hospice, and one of them obviously is that you're fatally dying. So it's there's a lot of way of comforting people. There's a lot of volunteers that work in the hospice. You have to have a certain amount of hospice of volunteer hours to be a legitimate hospice organization. Now, the, I'm, I'm going back to the American Kennel Club. I know that's a national uh, club, and it means a lot to be certified. Now, you said you took uh, classes in uh, Wal Walpole or at Petsmart? At the Petsmart, yes. Yeah, so how many hours did, of training did Abby and you go through? Well, she went through three classes, and it's like six weeks an hour time. So we, right. it was a, quite an extensive program that she went through. And then we passed the uh, good citizen, the, the canine good citizen is what this is. Aww. This is not That's just so through cute. the American, but this is actually the canine good citizen oh, is what yeah, she um, was certified for. Mm. So that's um, what, and because of that, she couldn't just go and become a pet to do pet therapy unless she had certification. Because there's a lot of things you have to do to be able to do be a pet therapist and not just for me but for her well can you give any examples of some of the things well that they have to be able to do this she yeah. can't bark uh-huh she can't you know well, she's she, looking at you now yeah. are you looking at me <laughs> she needs to be able to handle herself properly and you know because when i would go in the, the patients are attached to a lot of wires and there's oh, a lot yeah. of noises yeah. and yeah. when people are ill you have oxygen machines. She can't react to any of this. Oh, yeah. And yeah. at a time, I had to call for emergency help also when I was with a patient. Uh -huh. So that is, you know, she, I had to leave her. And I had to know that it was going to be okay for me to leave her. Oh, yeah, because otherwise she'd go looking for you. Or a regular mm. dog would go looking for the owner. Right. Or a lot of people, they, like you asked me when I first came, can I, will she, can I hold her? A lot of people will ask me, well, does she bite? Well, no, she doesn't bite. And yes, anyone could hold her because she's used to being held. You know, I had um, a Downs patient, and she would take her face and she would squeeze it really tight. 
and mm. Abby would just look at her and uh -huh. lick her. So uh -huh. it's, it's being able to handle herself properly in different situations that makes her really good for doing pet therapy. But why do pet therapy? We are finding, and I know that people say, you know, that, that you go to therapists and everything else. There's a lot of things that you can do to comfort someone. But not everybody <clears throat> can articulate what they're feeling and how they're feeling. And sometimes you get more open, like I said with my Patricia. Yeah. She was more yeah. open with actually <clears throat> the comfort of the dog in her arms mm -hmm. and, the, and the feel of her. You feel this little hairy beast and, and she the gives unconditional beast. love. But what, which, which patients do you like working with the most? Is there any particular ones? Uh... Well, I do have a fondness for dementia patients mm -hmm. because, you know, the, the patient that I'm talking about, she had dementia. Mm -hmm. And I have a fondness for dementia people because I know, because I had a grandmother who had dementia, it's really hard yeah. to deal with your family who has dementia, to see that slipping away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my manager will be like, well, she's going to ask the same questions over and over, and she's, but that's okay. Well, not all dementia, though, are in hospice. So no, no, no. I work with dementia patients who are in hospice. I would oh. like to work with dementia patients out of hospice. I I'm think just that not would sure be wonderful. How. Wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that yeah, be wonderful? Yeah, sure. I mean, because uh, they call them memory care facilities now. Do oh, they yeah. really? Yeah, that's what they're calling them now. Memory care. They care for your memory. <laughs> they're not calling them. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, the, well, the mm. nursing homes is gone. Assistive but problems. now it's memory care. Mm. In, in fact, uh, it's funny at the railroad station, 128 railroad station. They, they're building a giant city there of stores and other things. And on and the other side is a memory care facility going in. Oh, I didn't one. know that. That's fantastic. Yeah. But I think what you do, I, I would love for you to, to look into that and inspire others uh, because the dementia patients, the ones that aren't, you know, uh, in hospice, they really, I mean, they probably just sit around, you know, unless people visit them. They do. You know? They do. And nobody that pays, they figure that if they don't bother the people, they're not going to pay attention. But wouldn't that be wonderful if, if a little puppy came in and, and you just spark some life into them? Well, I ha do have to say that when I would go into a facility, if there would be a room full of patients, I would take her and go one by one and let them hold them because, you know, if I, even when I was walking in, oh, look at the puppy. Yeah. yeah. So I would make sure that I would go and visit everybody. And, I never was exclusive to just my patient. And of course, one of the training things, uh, training requirements must be that she can't get intimidated if a lot of people hover around her and give her attention, right? She, ha she has to be able to take that. Well, she does. She has to be able to approach a stranger. I mean, there's a whole list mm. of things that you have mm. to go through to pass the canine good citizen mm. test. Now, and yet she's alert, too. You can see that she's alert. Like there was a noise there. And she, she heard. She looked. Head. Now, are there certain dogs, do you think, that lend themselves better to this type of a role than mm. others? I Good think it's more her. personality mm. because uh, we even have a cat at Life Choice that mm. goes and does pet therapy. Really? And you could have a big dog... A lot of the dogs that pass the different certifications are big dogs. Oh, really? really? Yeah. German Shepherds, or does it matter? Yeah, I think it's just a bigger dog. But I like having a little dog because she can get on their laps. Mm. My patients can't all walk. Mm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. some of them aren't out of beds. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, the, the lawyer who just was in the fetal position on the bed. Sure. You can't put a big dog on no, the bed with No, not her. at all. No. So that's why I like, and with my daughter, we were we found that she really is able to bring her into her bed and hug her and get comfort. Oh, was that from wonderful? That. Anything that brings love out yeah, is no, a positive did, did thing. Did your daughter ever go with you to a hospice? Or? They say she's not able to because she's not over eighteen. Oh. Mm. Oh. Now, what about the families? Do the families want to hold the dog too? I haven't really interacted much with families. I just. And mostly, I just want to go in and be with the patient 
and spend my time with them, whether it's a half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. Oh, I know. just focus on my patient. Now, you don't get paid for this, do no, you? No, it's all volunteer. All volunteer? Yeah. Um, and how often do you go? I would go once a week. You go once a week? What kind of a caseload do you have? I usually have one patient at a time. Oh, okay. Because I have yeah. a full-time and a part-time job. Oh, no. Wait, so she, that's, that's why I told you she's amazing. Wow, She's that you amazing. do go. And volunteer, so. Unbelievable. Yeah. Now, wow. now, what is your uh, normal work? Well, I work for Rite Aid and as my full-time job as a cashier, and I work for Sharon Community Television as a videography videographer for my part-time job. Wow. God That's bless you. That's why you're so familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people may hear my, un, you know, know my voice, but... This is the second time I've been on this side of the camera. No I'm kidding. usually on the other side of the wow. camera. That's great. What, what was you're the doing? first time about? I was on the 250th show for oh, yeah, discussing the 250th celebration. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what kind of reaction, like when you go to enter the facility, what kind of reaction do they like stop you? They ever start, does anybody ever stop you and say, well, you can't bring the dog in? Or no. Or no. No. She has, uh, I have a pet therapy vest that I can put on her, and she has different documentation, like I can bring my diploma and stuff. So she's a therapy dog, so they can't stop me. Mm. Has anybody I take tried her, to? Um, not at a facility, but I have to keep acclimating her to noises and stuff, so I'll bring her to Costco and I'll bring her to different stores because she has to be used to being around. Yes. I'll bring mm. her in front of the Sharon Middle School and have her stand there as the <laughs> kids come out and she'll just stand there. And the kids will be <laughs> running all around her and she just stands there. Oh. Wait, that's, a, that's amazing. Has there ever been any situations where, where you weren't sure that you, you said, uh, well, you know, I got to watch her a little? Not really. Yeah. She's been really great. Do you ever have to take her for, uh, like, uh, updated training or things like that? Um, I haven't because um, I don't mm -hmm. really think I need to. She's just doing, been so good. And how about others? Are there others who, in hospice who do the same thing with there pets? There are. There are. They have mm -hmm. cats and they have other dogs. They're, they have another big dog. Uh -huh. But she's, you know, and I, not, I only know life choice hospice. There are so many different hospice organizations. Really? This is international. Yeah. And do they ever have use like parrots or birds? Or I don't like know, that? but that's a good idea. I was just curious. <laughs> that something. Uh, uh, I was going to ask you something about. Um, do you do you like ever have to like when you travel with your daughter or, or with other people? Do you have do you have a, can you take the dog on a plane? I have not tried to take her on a plane, but she can go into hotels because she's certified. So she is a therapy dog. So I have taken her into a hotel in different places. We've traveled by car, but I haven't traveled by plane with her. Mm. So, so you've gone into a hotel, do they ask you what does she do? Yeah, well, I have to have her certification with me. Mm. And have, she have is a therapy dog. they ever questioned you? You know, I'm just curious yes, between they do. this and the service animals. Well, she's right because there's certain questions they can ask you and certain questions they can't. Right. right. What, there can, is. what can they ask you? What well, they can really you? can't ask me why she's a therapy dog. They can ask me if she's a therapy dog, but they really can't ask me what function she performs as a therapy dog. But if I tell them and I show her their, her certification, they can't they can't question me. Mm -hmm. Well, well, there's. Uh, I mean, Legally, I mean, they can't. Yeah, but sometimes, because like we had, uh, it was brought out that people can just send away for certificates and they can just send away for stuff like that. So, like they can send away for a vest. Without, yes. without going through it, just so they can bring the dog with them, bring the service dog with them. Yeah. I but know they one, can. Do you know, do you know, like, if somebody goes into a facility do you know how to tell the difference between like somebody says they're a service dog and uh, like what would you tell our viewers to watch out for if somebody says this is a service dog and they're really not well first of all a dog can't jump and so if the dog is jumping and barking and behaving in that manner they couldn't have passed their test mm. 
So yeah, there's different ways that you can see a dog and how they're reacting. Because if they react by jumping and barking and, you know, reacting in a way, yeah. if they react to people. Yeah, there, there was a story once that this woman wanted to bring her dog into our inn. We had an inn. And uh, I said, well, let me just interview the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so she came down. <laughs> And she says, well, uh, I'll just leave the dog in the car. I just want him to get used to this. That dog did not stop barking and showing his teeth. And in the end, she says, I don't think my dog likes it here. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that dog didn't stop. But that's, that's interesting you said. Well, that's, I knew about the jumping. That was the clue. When they acted like that, they weren't a therapy dog. Mm. This was so obvious when she came in that she's so well behaved. Put her she the, has can you to put be. her on the table, see what she does? She's so cute. Oh. Abby, sit. Well, she might not. <laughs> Hi. Oh, look at her. Oh, she's got these bright, intelligent eyes. I, I, move her around so they can see. Let her look into the camera. <laughs> oh. Is that cute? Well, you know, we're, we're getting to... Uh, the, the end here. The You've Got to Be Kidding segment. We, you know, we have a You've Got to Be Kidding segment. <laughs> you know about that? No. This, this is, oh, You've Got to Be Kidding is where it, it can relate to anything, <laughs> and then all you have to do is say, You've Got to Be Kidding. In <laughs> fact, we have a You've Got to Be Kidding bag, which is, this one's, we have a lot of You've Got to Be Kidding bag. This one's falling apart. Whoops. See, it says right on it, you've got to be kidding. Yeah. See, you've got to be kidding. And in it, we have you've got to be kidding things. And we also have our, our new bookmarks. We uh, were partnered uh, with the moral. I give them plugs. But we also have um, some you've got to be kidding things. People send us, people email. We had a you've got to be kidding segment where People sent in names of towns that are funny, you know, like we have Bath, Maine, or this or that. So I, I, I was telling Camille, I was talking to somebody, and I said, oh, what's the name of your town? And she said, Pottstown. <laughs> and for some reason, it just, I couldn't stop laughing. And she says, what's funny? I says, Pottstown. She says, what's funny about Pottstown? I says, well, if you're not from Pottstown, it's funny. But it's, it's, what's funny is how people um, have funny towns, and they don't even think of it you know on a different subject but a def it's a you've got to be kidding tr true um, a friend of mine had a dog and I think the dog was around cats a lot I think they might have had one or two cats thought it was a cat he yeah. thought he was a cat and even I swear they found they couldn't find the dog one day and they looked all over finally opened up a closet and the dog was in there thinking that she was having kittens <laughs> oh my God! She was. Be be she believed that she well, was having. Well, kittens. I know cats that think they're dogs, but I never thought <laughs> I saw a dog that thought it was a cat. <laughs> but I mean, you see a lot of animals, especially the smaller ones, that are with cats, and they don't they don't go after each other because they they don't know any better. They just they're used to having the cat around, and they don't they, they don't think there's anything wrong or anything threatening about it. And the same thing with the cats. Well, I have a chinchilla. Oh, a and chinchilla she climbs in the cage with her. A mm. chinchilla? It's a um, a little rodent kind of thing. Aren't those fur? Yeah, <laughs> they have furs around the neck. Yeah, you've got to be kidding. And she plays yeah. with our bearded dragon. She she would play with anything. What's a bearded dragon? It's a reptile. That's another one. A bearded <laughs> dragon, a, and a reptile. Oh, you're gee. kidding! So, you, you know, on, you know on, an, on another thing too, we have uh, we try to do helpful hints. We're into financial literacy, and we're we're uh, also another project against violence. You know, cyberbullying. But this is one. Um, don't pay for the promise of a job. You ever hear like there's advertisements, and people say you send in twenty five dollars, or send in fifty. Don't do it. It's a scam. There's a, in fact, there's a list of scams. Uh, IRS every year publishes the top 10 scams, or is it the top 12 scams? One of the, at one least of 10. Them. Yeah, mm -hmm. at, le at least 10. <laughs> so this is good. They, they, if they have uh, 
pet therapy, you have pet therapy, but so you you go to the hospice, they don't pay you, you don't pay them for, for the privilege. But it is a rewarding experience. I used to be a hospice volunteer myself. Really? Not pet therapy. Yeah, it is <laughs> It is a really rewarding experience. Well, well I gotta to tell the make last- a difference in people's lives. The last hospice funny joke. My brother was in hospice and uh, the nurse, uh, the, the next day was trying to comfort my sister-in-law and his daughter. And she says very seriously to them, I think he's finding his Indian roots, <laughs> so don't worry. And they go, you know, you have somebody else. He's, he's, he's not Indian, nothing Indian at all. She says, oh, yeah, yeah, he told me. In fact, he told me the tribe he's a part of. And they, they said, what, what tribe? He said, the Schmohawk tribe. <laughs> You know, a schmo, a schmo hawk. <laughs> and so, she believed it. Yeah, and she believed it. And on the other, and another brother was telling uh, the family where her granddaughter was present about he was part of the sh schmo hawk <laughs> tribe. And his granddaughter says, Why didn't you tell me? I could have got a scholarship. <laughs> so, so on there. <laughs> Camille will wind up, tell them what to do. Thank you so much. We were really very well, excited. Thank you for having me. I mean, me. this is such a wonderful thing that you're doing. More and more people should know about it. More and more people should do it. God bless you. Thank you so much. And Abby. And thank you, Abby. It was nice to thank have you, you here. You thank you, Abby. <laughs> so I, I want to just ask our viewers to let us know if you have any questions or any suggestions, yes. whether it be about pet therapy or anything. We want to make sure that we're, we're covering the things that are most important to you. Because remember, this is your show. The law, your money, and you.